Welcome back to Therani, I'm Joe B. In this video, I'll show you how to walk with a rolling walker if you're given full weight bearing or weight bearing as tolerated orders by your doctor. Let's dive in. Full or weight bearing as tolerated orders are normally given to patients by their doctor after an elective surgery, like a hip or a knee replacement. There are two types of full weight bearing, full weight bearing and weight bearing as tolerated. Full weight bearing is self-explanatory and that the patient can even stand on one leg with an assistive device provided that the nerve block given pre-surgery has worn off. In contrast, weight bearing as tolerated is when a patient is instructed to provide full weight bearing on the surgical lower extremity, but respecting any increase in pain levels. If that is experienced, then the patient should lessen the weight bearing until it is at tolerable levels, preferably less than or equal to pain scale 4 over 10. Keep in mind to check your patient's ability to do a quad set in standing prior to shifting the pelvis to that unsound or surgical side to double check any presence of nerve block induced knee buckling. To determine if you are doing full weight bearing correctly, you can use a weighing scale and place your surgical or unsound foot on that trying to move the needle up to 100% of the patient's body weight. Perform this activity numerous times so the body can get used to the correct amount of weight bearing foot pressure. For weight bearing as tolerated, ensure that the patient provides weight bearing on the scale, but just up to pain levels less than or equal to pain scale 4 over 10. Perform this activity numerous times until the patient gets used to that feeling and capture that feeling during gait. Because of poor balance, increased surgical site hypersensitivity, and increased risk of re-injury at the acute 1-3 to three days, in subacute 4-21 to 21 days of healing, the patient will need to utilize a rolling walker. To adjust the rolling walker, the patient will need to stand in between the front and back posts. The handlebars need to be at the level of the greater trochanter of the femur. If it is hard to locate, the patient can straighten both elbows in such a way that the handlebars need to be at the level of the wrist. This can be attained by turning the rolling walker upside down and adjusting each post, moving away from the handlebars to lengthen the rolling walker and close to the handlebars to shorten. To walk with full weight bearing where the whole foot can be down on the ground, the patient advances the rolling walker first with the surgical or unsound leg. Then the good or sound leg steps through, passing the surgical or unsound leg while the rolling walker is kept being advanced forward. Turning to the right or left should be done at a 45 degree increments with the rolling walker first, then the unsound or surgical leg, then the good or sound leg. Walking backwards can be attained by advancing the rolling walker backward first, then the good leg, and then the unsound or surgical leg. This gait pattern does not require the patient to pause after every step and should be continuous. To walk with weight bearing as tolerated where the whole foot can be down on the ground, the patient advances the rolling walker first, with the surgical or unsound leg following next, then the good or sound leg steps too. Turning to the right or left should be done at a 45 degree increments with the rolling walker first, then the unsound or surgical leg, then the good or sound leg. Walking backwards can be attained by advancing the rolling walker backward first, then the good leg, and then the unsound or surgical leg. If you like this video, please like, share, and comment. And for more therapy animations, please subscribe to Therani.